gentlemen, this is the Mystery Writer speaking, and welcome to the show! First of all, I just wanted to thank everyone who supported my last review over Has Been Hotel. Now, today, I won't be doing any welcoming of new subscribers or watchers, not reading any comments or anything like that, for I'll be saving that for my hell of a boss review coming later this week. So stay tuned for that. Today, however, I wanted to make this review shorter as, as the, um, as the has been hotel, oh boy, as the has been hotel one was well over 40 minutes long and, oh, it was an absolute headache to deal with. Oh, it took me well over a month working on that. Oh my gosh. Still though, again, I really wanted to thank everyone who supported that, that video. And, uh, I mean, sure, it didn't go viral or anything, but still, come on. The, it got more than five views. That's something to celebrate. So today, this will be a shorter review as well as my first ever request. That's right. The monsters will be taking a bit of a back seat today and won't be appearing either. But again, stay tuned for the Hell of a Boss review to see more of the monsters. Yes, sir. Today, I'm finally going to do a review of the Steven Universe movie. As requested by Maxim Artist. All the way back in December. And it's December now. Wow, I am so sorry. It took me so long to get to this. And again, Chi Chi, who does collaborations with one of my personal favorite YouTubers, Will Ryan of DA Games, did just release a cover, an electro swing version of Other Friends over the weekend. So I guess the movie is still relevant despite being released all the way back in August. Yes, the Steven Universe movie has stayed with the internet for months now, with the movie star attraction Spinel becoming a fan favorite and even a meme that, ref that seemingly refuses to die. But does the movie warrant such fan favor? Plus, Steven Universe Future just started airing recently, so it's a good time to be talking about this. Plus, did the Steven Universe movie deserve better by Cartoon Network? What I mean is, because of how popular it has become, did it deserve a theatrical release instead of straight to TV? Before we can answer those questions, let's start off with a short synopsis of the movie, shall we? So, taking a page from Snow White, Pinocchio, and about a dozen different Disney movies, the Steven Universe movie begins with what else but a picture book, opening and then revealing to be read by none other than White Diamond herself. Recapping what has happened in the previous series before Steven, now two years older, announces his plans to live on Earth with his friends now that he has established peace across the universe. The Diamonds grow concerned over this and plead with Steven to stay. Blue says she hasn't shattered anyone in a long time. Yellow disbanded her armies. Wait, what? Are you kidding me? Really? Really? She disbanded her armies. Wow. That definitely won't bite them in the rear end later on. Oh, wait. We still got 90% of the movie to get through. Of course it will be! Ugh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's just get through the rest of the plot, and I will, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I will, I will elaborate on all this later, okay? Okay. Anyway, and White Diamond has been saying please and thank you to lesser life forms. Yeah, because 
that will definitely make up for thousands of years of intergalactic genocide. Saying please and thank you and being polite. Yeah, just ask Hitler how that went. Regardless of their pleas, Stephen goes home, runs into Connie, and even gets a little bit of kiss on the cheek before she leaves her space camp. Yeah, I used to work for space camp, and let me tell you, just trust me on this, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Stephen meets up with the rest of the gym, singing about happily ever after, before everything is so rudely interrupted by none other than Spinel, who appears back in some serious heat with an ejector and a rejuvenator. Um, we'll get some explaining on what those are later. Spinel easily defeats the gems, but because Steven is half organic, he manages to withstand the blows of the rejuvenator for the most part and defeats Spinel with her own weapon. Of course, however, this isn't without some serious consequences, as Steven has become powerless as the rejuvenator, as Bismuth later explains has the ability to reset gems to their default forms, which is exactly what happens to Garnet, Pearl, and Amethyst, and even Spinel, as she too ret returns to her default form. A fun, loving, friendship-seeking homage to 1930s cartoons. And so, for a majority of the movie, Steven is trying to help his friends and even Spinel to regain their lost memories with taking Amethyst to all her favorite places, fusing with Greg at a rock concert, and of course, Garnet is saved for the climax. But more on that later. Spinel even regains her memories and reveals to Steven the horrible truth. She was his mother's pink diamonds playmate before she was ultimately abandoned at the garden they used to play in. Apparently, Pink tricked Spinel into playing a quote-unquote game in where she was supposed to stay in one spot. And because she was a loyal friend, that's exactly what she did for 6,000 years. My gosh, she stayed in one place for someone who ultimately abandoned her for 6,000 years? That is insane and horrible. I, I knew Pink Diamond wasn't all that great, but my gosh, this is, this is just a new low. If, if the bar was here, the, the bar is now over here. It's, like, it's not even on the screen anymore. Do you see that? You see it? It was here, but now it's here. It's not. E it's not even visible to the camera anymore. Like, ah! poor Spinel. And so, Stephen convinces Spinel to stop her attack on Earth, which she does. But once she's done, she feels duped and used by Stephen, consumed by these new emotions that she ultimately doesn't understand. And it, this is only made worse by the reveal of Steven still being in the possession of the Rejuvenator, which he has had in his pocket the entire time because he couldn't bubble it away. Steven tries to explain himself, but Spinell is not having any of it, losing trust in everyone because of what his mother did to her and believes Steven is going to use her own weapon against her again to force her back into her default form. This enrages Spinel, who reactivates the injector, which once completely done pumping that pink liquid into the earth, would kill every organic life form on the face of the earth within hours. Wait, so the cluster appeared when yellow and blue showed up, sensing them as a threat, but didn't even bother to do anything with an actual world-ending weapon as it was landing on the planet? Yeah, talking about needing to put their priorities straight. Anyway, Garnet regains her memories, Spinel boosts her weapon, aka the, the injector, and she and Steven go at it, and Steven, of course, regains his powers. 
The battle isn't a, isn't an easy one, however, as Steven is backed into a corner, but he doesn't defeat Spinel. Instead, Spinel ultimately defeats herself. As she's wailing on Steven's oversized shield, she comes to the realization she really doesn't know what she's doing. And what she really wants is to be his friend. Okay, this is why Spinel is probably the best thing to come from this show in such a long time. Her character development. On one hand, she wants revenge against those she perceives to have hurt her, while on the other hand, she doesn't really understand these new angry emotions and instead wishes to be friends. She is without a doubt the best villain the show has ever produced, beating the likes of Jasper and Aquamarine and even White Diamond herself. True, she isn't completely evil, however, but that's the beauty of her character. She can be this Joker-like character enjoying being a complete psycho and taunting Steven, aka the hero, the great hero Steven. But deep down inside, she's just hurt. She's in pain. And she's just lashing out like a wounded animal. And she doesn't understand why. That's why she's a great character. Plus, in either form, she's just absolutely adorable. Anyway, Spinel accidentally causes the injector to explode. In the immediate aftermath, the diamonds appear wanting to live with Steven. Wow, we could have used you guys like, oh, I don't know, five minutes ago. They're in the fight. But thanks for showing up anyway. So yeah, Spinel ends up leaving with the diamonds, who apparently recognized her and yet said nothing about her to Steven, nor bothered to check up on her for 6,000 years. Big Broadway show finished. The end! And that was the Steven Universe movie. And it was great. It was inspiring. It was inspiring. Enchanting with a great moral lesson, which not too many cartoons cover. Which was dealing with these kind of emotions. And that seemingly annoying people, like myself, I identify with Spinel on a personal level all the way, have emotions and we need love and friendship as much as anyone else. The animation was definitely higher quality than the average episode, yet also relied a little too heavily on repeated images, like some walking cycles and such, yet it wasn't as bad as it could have been. The characters were good, the voice acting was good, especially with Sarah Stiles, who did the voice of Spinel, making her sound like she came from the 1930s. That and I love how they made her act, move, and talk like a cartoon character from the 1930s, giving it a real Bendy and the Ink Machine, Cuphead vibe, and I love it! The story was good as well, but definitely relied on plot convenience a little too much. Again, the best example would be when the diamonds showed up at the end as soon as the fight ended to, to take Spinel away. Yeah, that was convenient now, wasn't it? This really doesn't take away too much from the overall experience, and while this isn't a criticism, Steven convincing Yellow Diamond to disband her armies was a completely idiotic thing to do. Hasn't he ever heard of the famous quote by Teddy Roosevelt, speak softly and carry a big stick? That's how you make Peace! You don't cause any trouble, but at the same time, you better be ready to defend yourself, defend your peace from anyone ready to disturb it from either the outside or the inside. I mean, for crying out loud, how did Spinel get the injector and the rejuvenator so quickly? It was within the time of the show's universe less than an hour since Steven gave out his message to the universe and if Sunel went on the attack. How did she even get those anyhow? 
all way. No army to defend and or guard against possible terrorist attacks. Yeah, that's right. Stephen convincing Yellow to disband her armies pretty much led to the entirety of the events within this movie. Then again, we wouldn't have a movie if it weren't for that, now would we? Again, this isn't a criticism, just an observation. An actual criticism I do have against the movie, however, is that some of the ideas just don't feel as fleshed out as they could have been. Yes, I know, I am historically hard on the Steven Universe franchise as my previous review of Change Your Mind I gave some not so loving critiques of the show that not everyone agreed with. I still hate you, Sunstone, you stupid one-note abomination combination of Bart Simpson and McCruff the Crime Dog. Anyway, but I stand by what I said. And I stand by it to this day. What I mean is that Spinell's backstory could have been longer, more fleshed out than just one song sequence, as well as we could have explored Pink's side of the story. Why did she leave her? Why did she get bored of her? Was it to prove that she was all grown up to the other diamonds? Or was she just annoyed by Spinell? Did she see Spinell as a weakness or something? I, I think this could have really been expanded further. But I hope this will eventually be explored further in the new series. Overall, however, the movie was great. And dang near perfect. Therefore, I give it a total score of 4.9 out of 5. Well, yes, I have my criticisms. The film was great. What about my earlier question, though? Did the movie deserve a theatrical release? Honestly, I think if this film was given a longer runtime to allow for a more fleshed out backstory for Spinell, I think yes. It could have easily have been a movie worthy of a theatrical run. As is, however, it's just a really high quality TV movie and deserving of praise. Well, that's all the time I have for today. This has been the Mystery Writer speaking, and until next time, sayonara.